Yo, this is Deontay the Bronze Bummer Wilder, heavyweight champion of the world, and you're watching Real Fans Real Talk. Face facts, what up, what up? RealFansRealTalk.com Where Arthur Diamond's tricked young and intern Tom For the white and black fans Asia to Manhattan I get all my facts from my bro Mark the Stats Man If you're not tuned in, I recommend the CAT scan uh -huh, And if uh -huh. your brain checks out, then you deserve a backhand <laughs> Sports, gossip, all the hot topics hey, hey. RealFansRealTalk.com Got it, uh, they got uh, the hottest bloggers Did Jeremy Lynn hurt? We'll log on to the site and you can hear it from them first I'm talking about the latest, I'm talking about the greatest Go check out the archive even tell a neighbor, tell a body sent ya. From spring to winter, tune in should be the only thing on your agenda. Certified cosign, you know what I'm about, son. Real fans, real talk dot com. I'm out one. Real fans, real talk. Real fans, real talk. Real fans, real talk dot com. Real fans, real talk dot com. Real fans, real talk. Real fans, real talk. Real fans, real talk dot com. Real fans, real talk dot com. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another live episode of Real Fans, Real Talk. I'm Mark the Statman Skevich. Great to be back for another live episode. Uh, had to watch the throne and take my seat back from Eric. We looked a little comfortable in my seat last week. So but, I asked uh, you if you wanted to switch, but I see yeah. you're pretty possessive about the seat. Mark so. was here at about 3 o'clock this afternoon just so he could get the seat back. He, he camped out like concert tickets out here? <laughs> yep. The New Jordans was coming out. So. That's how it goes down. But we got uh, uh, NBA Finals, uh, Eastern and Western Conference Finals going on right now. A lot to talk about in the world of sports. Before we get into all that, let me introduce my co-host, the one and only Trip Young. What's going on, Trip? Oh man, it's, it's uh, man, we had a good week. Ball of a piece was dope. You know, we got caught in that monsoon, mm -hmm. but uh, it still turned out to be a, a great event. We're gonna talk about that a little bit later in the show. But uh, Eric, legend yeah. of two games. <laughs> What's going yeah, on, man? Excited to be here, man. We talking NBA playoffs, baby. I know. I'm. I'm just. I'm waiting to hear. You know. You speak about these Cavaliers and, and what oh, they've been doing. You know. They're they're impressive, man. They're looking really good. <laughs> uh, you, know. you know. We discussed it last week in prior <laughs> shows. We weren't going to really judge them until after they got out, out of the first round. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, they're still treating this like intramurals, and they're just running these boys <laughs> off the court. But they look That's good, man. They look really good. Yeah, definitely. Um, Twelve mother, in mother, a row, dating back to uh, last uh, playoffs. You know, they, that, back there. Yeah. Mother's Day uh, was this past Sunday. Didn't get a chance to wish my mother a happy Mother's Day on TV as usual. So I had to do a belated one now. And also the the this episode is dedicated to the fallen homie Rennell. I've known him since third grade. Uh, fans of the same teams, you know, struggling with the Knicks, Yankees. Rangers, Giants, um, passed away this past Tuesday. Uh, may he rest in peace. Um, with that being said, it's on to the sports. You talked about LeBron uh, and the Cavs. LeBron playing at a all-time mm -hmm. high level, uh, you know, over 30 points uh, per game consistently now. And uh, uh, You know what? I got to say, I like hearing the two of you guys, you know, talk about LeBron in this, you know, this way. And more so you, stat man, because yeah. I know you're the president. president of the LeBron James <laughs> Yeah, so more so Correct. you. But go ahead, continue what you were saying. You said he had, how many, 30? Was it at least 30? Was he doing Over right 30, now? what, was five games in a row, I believe? Okay. Well, it might have been a 35 the last 35, five games. 35, yeah. Just to be, uh, yeah. You know, I mean, I'm just trying to, to get technical. it. I know you're the stat man, so I wanted yeah. to get the numbers exactly right for the people at home. Why are you torturing stat man? I'm I just heard asking a question. I grinding from over here. I'm just asking, I just wanted to make sure what he was saying was right. It was 30, was it 35? I mean, we can, you know, Statman, you got the it numbers. That's definitely accurate, yes. Oh, okay. No, that's what I just wanted to make sure with that. And, um, you know, I mean, how, how, how did you like what, you know, what, what they did going into Boston? You know, LeBron was all over the place. You know, Kevin Love was 34 and 12. Tristan Thompson was on the boards. You know what I mean? I just have a, a very well-rested Cavs team mm -hmm. coming off of the sweep, and it looks like there's a possibility they might sweep. The Celtics as well, but okay. there's still more basketball to be played. I think you know it might go five games. I think Celtics might be able to bounce back at home in Game Two if they take anything. If they lose Game Two, you might as well just call it a sweep at that point, I believe. But if they do have a chance, maybe they make some adjustments and and take Game Two. I mean, on the bright side, the Celtics got the number one pick in the draft. If that means you know, 
It does. It doesn't help them. It doesn't help them right. Doesn't help them right now. But. They're the number one seed in, in the <clears> East, <throat> and and then you got a, a draft pick. You have a lot of free agents that'll probably say, "Hey, the Celtics are legit. They yeah. had the best record in the East. They need some more pieces in order to beat uh, LeBron and company." And you know, some of those pieces will probably sign for less going into Boston historic a basketball franchise you know the most championships in the nba history um so it's it's something that guys like blake griffin might consider and then you have uh markel fultz who's, who's a six, six five guard yeah you have isaiah thomas already but that's who they're saying and they're most likely going with uh with the first overall pick danny ainge said that he um is not interested in tra uh, trading the number one pick, but he is open to suggestions. I mean, Carmelo Anthony for the number no. one pick? Well, that no. wouldn't happen, right? No. That's just no. me dreaming. No, no. you're definitely dreaming. It's not happening. Is they're, that taking, no. they're taking Markel Fultz with the number yeah. one pick, and they'll probably look to trade either Isaiah Thomas or Avery Bradley this offseason. Well, one of those guys. More, ago. more likely Isaiah Thomas. I think them getting a number one pick in the draft is probably – the worst thing that could have happened to Isaiah Thomas and his future with the Celtics because of the fact that he's looking at one of those $200 million deals that they're not going to give that him. That they're not going to give him. And he's got the most trade value on the team right now. So now if you look at you got Marcus Smart, Avery Bradley, Isaiah Thomas, and Markel uh, Fultz. And Somebody's, Terry Rozier, who and, they play off the bench. And yeah. Rozier, now you're talking about five. five and all of these are mm -hmm. undersized guards at that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Who's the odd man out? Isaiah Thomas. He's got the highest trade value. Mm -hmm. You know, he's the oldest. You know, and we're talking about, you know, I mean, he's listed at 5'9", maybe even, you know, a little bit shorter than that. So I think he's going to be the odd guy out, which is, you know, which for the Celtics it works, but it just sucks for him because it's like, you know. Well, I mean, they might keep him. I, I, I probably would think that they trade Bradley. I mean, he is. Uh, that's more money. You know. Yeah, no, nah, I think they keep Bradley fits money. better next to Fultz just because Bradley's a defensive oriented guy. Yeah. And he'll fit better there. Um, plus, I, I just I don't see Isaiah Thomas at 29 years old. This is who he is. Yeah. He's not getting taller by next season. His game <laughs> isn't going to evolve any more than what it is right now. So why invest millions of dollars long term in a 29 year old five eight five nine guard yeah. when you can give the money to Bradley, who's a defensive specialist? And could play alongside Fultz. I think it just and makes more sense. And he's one of the sense. best perimeter defenders. Yeah, it, it just makes more sense to go with Bradley. Basketball. Who do you think they'll be looking to get for for Thomas? I mean, they'll be looking for maybe a forward, a obviously. Forward. Yeah, maybe a small a, forward or power forward. Yeah, yeah. prior forward. I mean, the, the tough part is next year he's actually on a pretty reasonable contract. He's only making about six mil. Yeah. So I mean, you could play it out and just let him go outright in free agency, or if you get a, a you know a Godfather type deal that you can't refuse, maybe you trade him and you get more yeah. future picks. And stockpile more young talent. Yeah. But I mean, they they're in a win win. They're gonna get the number one pick this year. They have a good chance of getting the number one pick next year because they they own the rights to swap to with the, the Nets, Nets again next yep. year. And they and, got cap money. They it, can go yeah. after Gordon Hayward this year. They could wait next year and go after Paul George. Yeah. I mean, they could do anything they want at this point. Yeah. They're the opposite of the Knicks. They could do whatever yeah. they want. Now I know you did mention you know the Melo trade, and I was you know I was thinking about it. I said you know a good place for you know, the Knicks to try to move Melo too would be to the Lakers because, you know, they could trade Melo for D'Angelo Russell and, you know, a couple other pieces to actually make the trade work. The Lakers are going to draft another. More than likely, you know, Lonzo Ball, Lonzo Ball is going to be playing for the Lakers. So, you know, you're not going to have Lonzo Ball and, you know, uh, D'Angelo Russell together like that. You, you, it's just, I don't think that's going to work. So if you can get Melo over there, I'm sure he wouldn't mind going to L.A. because now you still got, you know, a really good point guard. Whether it's, you know, Alonzo Ball, whoever Boston goes with, whoever's, the, you know, the opposite, whoever they don't take, rather. You still got Brandon Ingram, so you got a couple of young guys. And, you know, with Melo there, they can probably get another guy to come over too. So that might actually be something the Knicks should look into. But, um, I mean, Paul George has already said he's out here. He's about to start working out with Kobe. He tried to get to the Lakers, so you know they're gonna have to move on yeah. this thing fast if they get it done. I think Paul George is the boom. I think Melo. I don't think he would sign off on going to LA at this point because their team is still, even with the young talent, yeah. they would still be a couple years away, and he only has two years left on his deal. So anywhere he goes, they have to be ready to win right now. If they're not ready to win right now, Melo's not signing off on it. 
Paul George is the guy that they're going to target. That's why I yeah. think the Celtics would be an option, but I don't know. I mean, Isaiah Thomas for Melo is probably, nah. you know, maybe some other pieces that they that add. That would be the Knicks. bad for the Knicks to, yeah. to do that. That wouldn't, like, yeah, you know, Isaiah Thomas is an all-star, but, again, I mean, he's getting up there. He's, like you said, uh, he's not getting any taller. And he's not, you know what I mean? Like, they, they, they need more of a dynamic passer to go along with Porzingis so he could really run the yeah, offense through Porzingis, and, and that's not Isaiah Thomas. According to the mock draft that I've been seeing, they, there's this uh, French guy, Frank Nintolino. Frank. Or whatever. It's a 6'5 point guard, you know. Only 6'5 um, point guards? Like, is that like the, the like, what's up? I hope the Knicks don't take him. <laughs> I really don't. I, this guy is way too frail. He's like 170 pounds. Oh, no. Nah, and yeah. he's only averaging 190, about... 190. 6'5", 190. 6'5", 190, all right. And he is averaging 5'1". Well, when you one. look at K-Poor, what? you look at how he, he's 190 and 6'5". Yeah, nine. but... but the, 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 I mean, I'm glad you brought that up. I think this is a make-or-break year for Przingis. I think Przingis has to show that he can play down in the post and he can develop more yeah. of the game. We, he, to me, he took a step back this year. He, well, the team he, itself... No, uh, he took a step, step back. back. He was not as explosive as he was year one. Yeah. And he he wasn't able to take over any games. So we got to so really look at him and say, yeah, but are you able to take that next step? He was I'm, getting pushed around by Marcus Smart at times. He was. But I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt just because the team was so horrible this year. Yeah, when you're playing on a losing team, you're, it, you're just kind of not as... Uh, not as into it for the most part. Like mentally, you're just not. So was, you know, was Car Anthony Towns playing for a winning team? Because Car Anthony well, Towns still look good. Yeah, but they but they <laughs> have a, a better chemistry than what the Knicks had. They brought him. I mean, they still got. Because remember, towards the second half, they, they got, had, they got Wiggins. Talented. They're a young team, and it's yeah, not like nobody. Minnesota, like those guys, Wiggins is not like a mellow where he's stopping the ball all the time. And, and if they, they, they Rubio, were in the East, then yeah, Rubio be a is. Team. is out, he started playing the second half of the season. Like everybody thought he should have been playing from the, from the jump, so it's a little bit different. But I mean, they at this point, you know, they're not. It's not looking like they're gonna get rid of 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 you know of Phil Jackson. So they gotta figure out something with with Melo, and then get a point guard in there who can really run. Because that's the only way you know you're really gonna get that development out of Porzingis. He needs that a, a point guard who can really pass. He's gotta show me a little offense. bit more killer instinct. I've I watched too many games this year where he tried to go into the post and teams would put smaller guys on him and push him off the block. So he's got to develop more of an attitude and more of a killer instinct. Well, might have to, I still love his game. Yeah, but he's got to, to, yeah, but he, he's got to develop. So, yeah, rookie year looked great. We gave him a pass for some things that he wasn't able to do just yet. But now it's like, all right, we're going into year three. Are we sure that we can build a team around him? He definitely needs to get his weight up, that's for sure. Yeah. That's the real question. Because right now he's been baby. Melo gets all of the blame for everything. Of course. So Przingis doesn't have to answer the tough questions. Przingis doesn't have to be a true leader of the team. Yeah. So all this talk about let's trade Melo, okay, so is Przingis going to answer those tough questions? Can you count on, on Przingis to carry you late in the game? That's what we're going we gonna to figure out now. We, we gonna and see that's, this, that's this what year. I want to know. I don't want no part of that dude, Frank, however you pronounce yeah, his last name. Yeah, I looked up his numbers. You know what? That yeah. would actually be something the Knicks would do and draft, <laughs> draft him. If, so good luck he, with that one. If Dennis Smith is on the board at number eight from North Carolina State, Dennis Smith is the, is the fit. But Phil's got to be willing to say, hey, we're going to go with a, a more up-tempo point guard as opposed to all this triangle nonsense no, he, that, and just bringing a guy who fits the system. Dennis Smith over is the explosive point guard that we would need. Yeah, it's, it's, over, it's over for that. Triangle, Phil got to give it up. If he ain't stepping down to coach the team, give it up. And, I mean, hold a sec. Honestly, I could take him or leave him. I still want the Knicks to try to go bring Mark Jackson in and, 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 and do some things. But I don't think that's going to happen because the Knicks are used to just, you know, making bad decisions. So. No, hold a sec isn't bad, but Phil's got to let him coach the way he wants to coach. Well, yeah. then they got to get rid of Phil. Honestly, I, I, honestly, I'd keep Melo and just get rid of Phil. You know, but I think at this point, get rid of them both. I love Melo, well, but I think it's time for Melo I mean, to listen, move on. I think it's time for Phil to move on as well. Well, he's not going to win in New York. While you know, at this point, in trade his career, him to so L.A. and then Phil goes to the GM. back to, to L.A. Well, <laughs> yeah. nah, they got they got Maybe magic now. Something. Maybe they got if magic Phil and Genie didn't break up, that was still a possibility. Yeah. But once yeah. Phil and Genie broke that's up, that's why they broke up because <laughs> he didn't want to come back to L.A. and, and be the GM. So she's like, I'm gonna just go get magic and. You know, we're going to start rebuilding from there. I'm intrigued, though, as we talk about the draft really quickly. I know we're gonna, we got to switch it up, but if we could find a way to trade with Phoenix at number four, 
Because I really, I like De'Aaron Fox. I think De'Aaron Fox is, is probably the, the point guard with the most upside in this draft because of his defensive ability. And the, fan, and the Suns are kind of guard heavy right yeah, now. Yeah, they're so guard heavy. They don't the necessarily. point guard heavy too, yeah. so that's the yeah. good news. Yeah. So that's exactly what we need. I think if we, you, if we can we find a way, we got to get there. Because I don't think he gets past Orlando at six. I think that 5-6 range with the Kings and Orlando, that's yeah. De'Aaron Fox's range right there. Yeah, yeah he's, he's going to He go won't there. get past number six. Now, the... the the thing is, Do the Sixers draft another center. No, they're, they're <laughs> drafting. They're drafting a point guard too. Honestly, I think the Sixers may trigger. So I think they trade out of that, and I think they look to get a veteran. They're at a crossroads. They got to make a decision with this team. They've had so many picks over the last four years. Like you bring in another young body, who's where are they playing? Yeah. Well, I mean, it depends because you know, if they can get Kyle Lowry, you know, veteran point guard to go with those guys, then then yeah, it makes sense. But as of right now, I mean, I you know, it's going to go point guard, point guard, point guard. So, yeah, you know, maybe the Knicks could try to work something out with the Suns. But then, I mean, what are you giving the Suns? I think if you... The eighth pick and then and, and what else? Because you got to throw a play up in there somewhere. Yeah, I mean, it, it depends on... Without looking at the rosters all the way through, I think if you... You throw in a Lance Thomas, Kyle O'Quinn with the eighth pick yeah. for their fourth, maybe I think that'll might. work. Because those aren't big salaries that they have to take on, but those are guys that could be in a rotation right yeah. away. And since they don't necessarily need a point guard. Exactly. Yeah. Lance know. Thomas could slide in as a as a guy who could play some minutes at the small forward. Yeah. Kyle O'Quinn could be a backup center. And then they could still get a quality guy at eight. So I think yeah. that's a again, which would you know fit their needs more anyway, because we know that the, yeah. the top four picks really oh, I mean that's guards. how we're gonna are gonna go to guards yeah. anyway. So So yeah. I mean I, again but that's without looking at the rosters completely. But if we can get to four, I think there's a good chance. Yeah, but being, if, if we can't get shape. to four, De'Aaron Fox is definitely off the board. I mean, by the, that the Knicks don't the Knicks don't like trading up to get potential superstar point guards. You know, as as we know from uh, the Steph Curry uh, year. Yeah. So. Nah, but that's not the Knicks' fault though. That year, nobody thought <laughs> Golden State was. Remember, Golden State already had Monte Ellis, and the Knicks yeah. really thought that he was going to fall to number eight. You uh -huh. know, we they were they one pick away. We thought he was going to fall. They blew that one. <laughs> well, it's not their fault that Golden State took him. I mean, it's, we blew it because we took Jordan Hill. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, that was that's what we blew it. I don't know what possessed them to take Jordan Hill, but you know, it's the Knicks. I don't put anything past them. You know, what are you gonna do? What was it seventy three? I think it was that was the last time the Knicks won. Yes. yes. So what's that about? Uh, I mean, you're the mathematician. How many years is that now? How many? It was a 44, 40, 45? 44. 44. You know, you I stop. Don't, Come on, stop I'm just a I'm asking dying. questions. I'm just asking. Cliff, we still got that picture back there, I'm Cliff? just asking. Just to balance just, things out a little bit around here. I'm just asking head. questions, okay? I'm just asking questions, all right? And I just wanted to know. Man, Cliff's not even a Knicks fan. Don't don't put Cliff in, Say, in the middle of this. I know Cliff. Don't involve yes, Cliff. Don't this involve is, Cliff in this, okay? You and Cliff have this WWE rivalry where he's willing to do anything to get back at you. So you know, <laughs> he might be willing to throw that picture up there real quick for you. For I'm about to call the Dudley boys <laughs> and tell them to get the tables, all right? What else we got going on with that, man? <laughs> Well, we do got the Western Conference Finals as well, and we got a fan mail question. Um, Kyle from Yonkers writes, what do you guys think the Western Conference Finals would be if Kawhi didn't get hurt? Um, well, first of all, they would have definitely won game one because they were just completely yeah. destroying them, and that would have taken one game at home. Maybe they would have lost game two. Maybe the Warriors would have made some adjustments, even though they – considered the game one win being adjustments, which I know yeah. bothered Trip Young. Nobody turned around and said the real reason yeah. why they won. And I, I was just completely disgusted by it. Trying to make it seem like, it. you know, the, the adjustments in the second half were, uh, yeah. you know, some genius stuff by Coach Brown that, exactly. you know, got I was, the win. I was just really confused by that whole thing. I'm like, so nobody is going to attribute this to Kawhi Leonard not being in the game for the last uh, I mean, they can't say half. that in the press conference. <laughs> if Kawhi didn't get down, we would have lost. Lost, like, yeah, yeah. You know, so. I don't think but funny. Yeah, like, you know, we just made all these adjustments and we did this and we played. No, Kawhi Leonard wasn't there. You was losing by twenty five. Kawhi Leonard goes down and you go on an eighteen nothing run. There's your answer right there. I mean, but there's some adjustments that have to be made as well. Yeah, no Kawhi Leonard. <laughs> no, but that's the adjustment. We can't, we can't just say, oh, Kawhi the, went out. The adjustment the is we taking Kawhi Leonard out. I mean, that's the adjustment. Last time I checked, they destroyed the Rockets without Kawhi Leonard. But I mean, this ain't the Rockets. No, no, it ain't the Rockets. Yeah. But this is not last the time I checked, the Spurs paid a lot of money to Lamarcus Aldridge. He was on the floor. 
He was on the floor, but right. So it wasn't like it's not like the Spurs are one man game. This ain't the Rockets. This is the Golden State oh. Warriors where you got the second and third best player, arguably in basketball, and you got three of the best shooters in the league yeah. on the, on this team. Plus yeah. Draymond Green, plus you know Livingston coming off the bench, who, who got you know who turned up once Kawhi went down. This is not the Houston Rockets that we we talking about. But right is it here. the Warriors' fault that the Spurs? Couldn't make their own adjustments to survive without Kawhi. No, I mean, it's not. Still, it's not. No, no, no. It's not. It's yeah. Not, so it's I mean, not we, we can't the, just sit there and, and the Warriors' fault. But it wasn't no adjustments. The jelly adjustment <laughs> was Kawhi Leonard wasn't there. The, the adjustment was the way Zaza yeah slid <laughs> underneath to, yeah. to his ankle. That yeah, was when, that was the adjustment. He he said, you know what? I'm gonna slide under him this time instead Come of just on. standing straight up in front of him. We're gonna take him out, and then you know you cut the head of the snake, and that's pretty much what happened right there. But uh, to answer the fan mail question, you know, if Kawhi doesn't go down, I think it'd have been one one right now because I think that would have just been a wake up call. For Golden State, you know, you know, like you said earlier, Eric, you know, coming off that rest, I mean, they didn't do what the Cavs did. They no, came off the correct. rest and they looked like they, you know, they were a little rusty and the Spurs was all over them. Um, but I do feel like they would have got the split in San Antonio. Like, I felt like they would have went back to Golden State with, with the series tied at two apiece. Well, you mean going to San Antonio? I mean, excuse me, going to San Antonio. I one feel up, like one up, I know. feel like going to – no, no. Well, I mean, when they go back to Golden State for game five, I feel like it would have been 2-2. Two, two. Oh, I don't know about that. I think San Antonio would have won game one. I agree with you guys on that. Mm-hmm. But as we talked about last week, there's I can't see San Antonio keeping up with them. For more than, but you think Golden State would have won three game. games in a row at two back to back in San Antonio? Possibly. I just San Antonio doesn't have much outside of Kawhi. But a lot of what they've done during the regular well, season is smoke and mirrors. Yeah, but I mean, listen, Aldridge is really good. He's, it's just, he's, it's just, it's just hit or miss with him though. He's overrated. But the way, the way he came into Game One playing, I mean, him and Kawhi, they had seventeen and sixteen at the half, something like that. Yeah. So, you know, and, and I mean, he's piggybacking off of game six in Houston where he had a great game. Mm-hmm. You know, so if, if we were going to get that consistency from LaMarcus Aldridge, then we're going to have a series on our hands. But that just wasn't the case after, you know. Well, you can focus more of the defense on on him. Yeah. You know, and then, because you know, Kawhi's it. not there also. But, so I mean, Ka- Kawhi was easy. doing everything. I mean, he no, Kawhi was ball. going to the basket, yeah, Kawhi dunking all people, yeah, yeah. shooting, facilitating the basketball. And, and Aldridge was actually looking like a top power forward in the league, wow. you know. And then, you know, it just completely, you know, went to the to the toilet bowl after, after that, you know. I know, you know, everybody's been talking about the play with Zaza, and I, and I said it earlier. No, I don't think it was intentional. But yes, it was a dirty play. But, I mean, I mean, this happens. This is something that the Spurs are usually on the other end of with, you know, they, they got Bruce Bowen, yeah. who was known Bruce for this. Bowen, so, that's, so I did, I found, you know, Pop's press conference a little funny, yeah. talking about, you know, Zaza and, you know, when, you know, when you know your guy Bruce Bowen was the, the man for known for doing that, you know, back in the you know back in the, the early two thousands and, and whatnot. That was that was him. So, what do you think the do you think the league is going to do anything next year? Because they're talking about how you know the NFL went with the going for the head, and you have to learn to adjust to not do that. Do you think the league will give us suspensions or fines for players that that go under the leg like that? I mean, it's possible, but. I, I mean, it's rough because, like I said, like I mean, you really can't judge a person's intent. Like I don't, like I, said, I don't, I don't feel like Zaza was. But like, at the same time, the NFL penalizes and fines people whether their intent was there or not. Because sometimes had to helmet to helmet collisions happen because somebody's ducking a certain way and mm-hmm. you can't adjust yeah. mid. You I don't. Know. I don't think the NBA should. I think there are too many rules that are already catered towards the offense. All these offensive players, all these three point pump fakes that turn into free throws <laughs> yeah. that's the offense initiating contact yeah, yeah so that's another thing that they need to look ridiculous. at with the going underneath yeah their the, the arm sweet the up. sweet yeah. moves and great the so contact. then it's like so i can't breathe on the offensive guy without him getting a, a you know yeah. a free throw now i can't close out on the three-pointer 
Like, if we're not closing out, then just let everybody shoot on the three and just shoot, and Plus, that's it. It wouldn't have mattered because even if Zaza Pachulia got suspended for a game. Yeah, I mean, even if no he got suspended thing. for the whole series, like, yeah, that's not the same as, as losing Kawhi, Kawhi yeah, Leonard. So, so it wouldn't even matter. Now, you know what I mean? Like, unless the rule was going to be you take out the But if he got $100,000 fine, you might, you know, Zaza might think twice before doing that. I never think he would think twice before nah, doing that anyway. Even if he got, I mean, he's talking about. I guys. don't think it was anything wrong with it. I think yeah. he, he he closed out. He did get very close yeah. to him, but he closed out the play. It's not like he was looking down at Kawhi's feet and to see like, all right, let me put my foot right yeah, here. That's, so that's he, the land. he just closed out. Right. And it's and we we forgetting that I mean, Kawhi was already I didn't think anyway. it was anything yeah. intentional either. But at the think. same time, that's the difference between. The Warriors winning and the Spurs winning, so it's a it's a huge difference. Yeah, not so. in that situation, but that's the thing. Even that's even if you took though. out Pachulia, that wasn't going to make a difference <laughs> whether or not so, the Golden State I mean, came back in that game. N- nobody was going crazy when Kelly Olynyk popped Kevin Love's shoulder out. Well, of I play. was no, but I'm saying like there was, wasn't this big off. fuss by the oh, media. Yeah, nah, nah, nah. It was like oh, they they got a man down now. Yeah, and we could all clear, see clear as day. It was intentional. Well, yeah, in that situation, that yeah. was intentional. That, he put the, him in a UFC armbar. Yeah. So we saw what was going on. It is what it is. These these yeah. injuries happen. You got to move on. The Spurs have built their team to be a powerhouse, just like everybody else. So all this talk that Pop is making it seem like, oh, we got to face this dynamic team. Well, you know what? You went out and got Lamarcus Aldridge for a reason, right? And brought in Gasol. And brought in Gasol. So it's time to put him to work. Yeah. And that's the that's the thing that sucks. But you gotta you gotta deal with it. I mean, listen, Golden State's used to playing teams, you know, without a full roster at this point. So they've been doing it the past three years yeah, of the playoffs. They, they've actually gotten pretty lucky. Every with that. every yeah. round of the playoffs this yeah. year, they've played a team who was missing a key player. And not that I feel like Portland would have even did anything against Golden State, but you know, your does make a, a bit of a difference there. And then George I mean, George Hill, Hill, Hill in and, round, and, yeah. and Utah. Now you're talking about now it's like it's just it's getting even higher and higher every round. So maybe with LeBron the, should rest the rest of the series. Right, LeBron's got to sit down the rest of the series. Yeah, but. you know, because you know we can't we can't afford that, man. So, but it is what it is. I mean, everybody kind of pretty much knew at the beginning of the season this was what it was going to come down yeah. to. The Spurs, uh, the good news for them is there's a, a longer gap than usual. Game three one doesn't start until Saturday. Yeah. So they got uh, quite a few days off for Kawhi to get better. He's questionable for Saturday. It's an ankle injury. He might play Saturday. And, well, know, if he doesn't maybe, play Saturday, it's over. Yeah. He might as well not even come back like if he don't play on Saturday. Over. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. They're not winning four out of the next no, six against I, Golden no, State. So. Yeah, they're, they're not. But they ain't even going to have a chance if he don't play on Saturday. So he might as well just get ready for next season then, if that's the case. If, if the Warriors are uh, – I mean, if, if Steve Kerr isn't there, they not worried then. So <laughs> Steve Kerr hasn't been showing up. He's chilling. Exactly. So if he ain't showing up, they ain't worried. That's what I got to shout out uh, uh, Hermione. You know, he did, he won the, the Real Fans Real Talk Fantasy Football League twice. But uh, he says, you know, uh, Steve Kerr was in the locker room at the half. And uh, so I said, all right, yeah, I'm going to give it to them. It was the pep talk from Steve Kerr that turned everything around. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Had nothing to do with Kawhi not being there. But uh, shout out to Kyle from Yonkers for writing in. The email address is fanmail at realfansrealtalk.com. You can also check us out on the web, realfansrealtalk.com. Twitter and Instagram, at RealFanTalk. And, uh, of course, uh, all our contact information is on the RealFansRealTalk.com website. We got one more fan mail question. We kind of touched on it before, but Jeff from Queens wrote in, if you were the Celtics GM, would you take Lonzo Ball number one, even if he doesn't work out for the team? Uh, I mean, I think we all agree Markel Fultz is the... The the pick that Boston is going to go with, he's the you know a better shooter out of the two. Lonzo's the better playmaker, but I mean if Lonzo wants to play for the Lakers and he grew up a Lakers fan, you know well, you're the you're the Celtics. You don't draft a late you know Lakers fan like to the rival. Actually, franchise. Lonzo like, hasn't been the one saying it. it's actually yeah. Lavar Ball who's been yeah. well, no Paul, and Paul talking to the Lakers fan. Yeah, he played Celtics, for the yeah, Celtics. They drafted him. I think if you you know if, if I'm the Celtics and I want to be petty, I'm just gonna take Lonzo Ball. Just, yeah, I think just, you take the guy with the yeah. with the higher upside, and Fultz has a little bit more upside than him. Yeah, and you you go from there. But I mean, you could go Lonzo as well. It's, I don't think you go wrong with either yeah. one of those guys. But I tell you one thing, you know, you know, there's a lot more pressure 
going to be on Lonzo Ball than there, you know, there oh, would yeah. be with Fultz. So, you oh, know, yeah. that in itself, you know, could be the deciding factor, you know, because this kid is going to have pressure coming from everywhere. And on top of that, his dad is making it to the point where everybody in the NBA is going to want him to fail. Because of the way he's running his mouth, they're going to go extra hard when they're playing whatever team he's on, you know, so might just be like, yeah, we'll let him, let's let him, you know, we, we'll take full. Does his, does his draft, draft stack uh, stock fall past number no. two? The Lakers no. definitely take him if he's The Lakers available. are taking him. If he's available, nah, they I mean, him. it depends. If, if, like we talked about before, if, if the Lakers feel they can make a deal for Paul George, they might have to include that pick. Mm -hmm. Um the one interesting thing I'm hearing, though, is that they're going to have him and De'Aaron Fox actually work out together for the Lakers. So De'Aaron Fox yeah. actually gave him the business twice this year when they played. Yeah. And if De'Aaron Fox gives him the business at the workout, Magic may be intrigued and say, hey, you so, know what? Because yeah. yeah. De'Aaron Fox is a much better defensive player, and he's much more athletic. Yeah. The, the, and they're still about the same height. So. Yeah. That, I mean, ball is, is a little stockier. Yeah. But height-wise... Is, is equal, athleticism is better. I think Darren Fox is closer to like a John Wall type point guard. Yeah. So if Magic sees them work out together and say, hey, this guy has more potential and we could do more with him next to D'Angelo Russell than Lonzo Ball, that could be the pick there as well. Yeah. But I, I do, I think it's like 80% certain. I, I don't see Magic passing on Lonzo Ball. And he already said his, his father wouldn't be a deterrent in yeah. him picking Lonzo anyway, so. Yeah. All right, once again, fan mail at realfansrealtalk.com. And if you're just joining us, you're watching Real Fans Real Talk here at the halfway point of the show, the show where uh, no rompers are allowed. None. <laughs> you, you'll never see any of us uh, <laughs> rocking any of those. But uh, moving along to baseball, uh, the Yankees are a half a game back from the best record in baseball. And on Mother's Day, we had uh, Derek Jeter's number two uh, jersey retired. Mm -hmm. uh, great ceremony, seeing uh, you know other uh, legends and and the sport and and Yankees uh, with their you know the core four was there. Um, all their numbers are retired, and uh, Bernie was there, and you know a lot of the great That's Yankees. That's my guy, man. I, Bernie was my favorite <laughs> Yankee player growing up. You know, I was, but I, I was happy, man. We got a. We're gonna have to run the, uh, the, the 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 real fans, real talk, respect Derek Jeter video before this show was out for uh, you know for for my man Jeter man. But it was a great thing, one of the greatest to to do it. You know, one of the greatest Yankees to play this game, five time world champion, the classiest of class acts, Derek Jeter, no issues on the field, off the field. Like I mean, what what. Can, you know, what can you not say about Derek Jeter, man? Just one of the greatest to, to play this game. A lot of guys um, grew up idolizing Jeter. A lot of the guys who are playing in the league now. I mean, he's mm -hmm. one of the iconic players in sports. And, you know, when he was asked if you could trade and be with somebody else, you know, anybody else, he said, humbly, I was, there was no one else I'd want to be in. Honestly, why would you? If you're Derek yeah, Jeter, would, <laughs> yeah, you know. What kind of question is that? The man got five rings. He's you know, gonna go down as one of the greatest to play the game. Like, what, why wouldn't he want to do it the way he did it? Like, that didn't even. Yeah, no steroid controversy behind him. No yeah. uh, extracurricular activities. Three thousand plus nightclubs hits. or like, anything like that. No like arrests or just uh you know the right way waited you know and even waited so so he retired to you know start mm -hmm. his family so. stayed stayed with the yankees his entire career mm -hmm. um and, know, they, and the yankees did right by him owns, as, oh, yeah. as they should oh, have yeah. as they should have a lot of nice uh, gifts that he got on the uh on mm -hmm. the retirement day as well and owns we had a ton of yankees tour. all time records like you know you the man when you get a retirement tour and every other ball club has something for you when you go there like you know you the man cuz not I mean, Kobe everybody's got that getting too, that but you know, you know it's that's rare. a that's a recent thing a lot of guys yeah. recently been yeah. getting it like that ortiz well, yeah. yeah ortiz mariano got that as well so you know but yeah he he's class act he's a legend Mm -hmm. Speaking of Ortiz, uh, he spoke out on the Red Sox fans uh, earlier on First Take, uh, talking about how uh, you know he believes that it happened with the fans with the racial slurs and didn't personally happen to him because he's on the he's playing for the Red Sox, so he didn't. If he got to, traded, then it probably would have would have happened. So he probably yeah, would have most likely. That. But you know, so that's Red Sox fans. For yeah. You, 
Yeah, what are you, what are you going to do, man? It's, and it's not all Red Sox fans, but, you know. But, you know, it's Red Sox fans. <laughs> <laughs> they do that, you know. Even, even even the Red Sox fans that I'm actually cool with, you know, that are, you know, or family with will tell you in a heartbeat, yeah, there's a lot of people, you know, in Fenway that are like that, you know, which, which sucks. I mean, because we're talking about 2017 now. So... You know, what are you going to do? And but it was good. I'm glad he spoke up about it, you know, because he, he did mention, you know, he's friends with these guys, with uh, Adam Jones and uh, CC, and, and these are guys that came out and said, you know, this about about Fenway Park and some of the fans that are over there. If uh, you do get that Derek Jeter video up uh, in the back there, just let us know. Um, but in the meantime, uh, Giselle, uh, Tom Brady's wife, was on Charlie Rose, and... Uh, mentioned Tom's concussions. He was. She was asked as far as him, uh, pl you know, still playing at a high level, and whether or not she, you know, would want him to retire. And she mentioned concussions, and there are, weren't really uh, documented concussions there, um, you know, for for him. So it's kind of came as a little bit of a shock, but uh he, he does have concussions uh, apparently according to her and well, it was obviously probably we know like the precursor to him being on the Madden cover the concussions so maybe yeah. that was what it is or i don't know if it's like the stereotypical thing since she's a model maybe she just didn't know what concussions were really since they weren't actually listed on any of the injury reports i don't know if that might have been the case but like I said, it hasn't been reported, and now yeah. she's actually started a whole big thing big for, in yep. in the league because she not only said this past season, but she said every year he's yeah, had a she, concussion, you know, and, and it hasn't been documented. So that could be a huge, huge situation now. Concussion gate? Yeah, <laughs> concussion yeah, gate. She, she's, she's, so they have spy gate, deflate gate, the and now concussion yeah. gate. Yeah. The, <sighs> she's just a little too vocal. I mean, you know, she's had, she said some things on Twitter. Mm -hmm. She she's got to chill. She's got to relax. Honestly, she should have left this one alone. Yeah, this is one of those situations where you're not in the locker room. Whatever he told you, that's yeah. in confidence, and, and that's it. Unless I mean, we're talking about he's retired in the Hall of Fame now, and you might want to you come out and say that, but you can't say that I while think, a man is still playing. I, I think even got still, enough scandals. As yeah, there, there's so much that surrounded this Patriot team during his she time. Said, you know what? She probably you can't just she probably don't said, say anything. She probably says she don't care. She probably said, you know what? I'm tired of him. I want him to come and be with the family, and I'm not trying to lose my husband to another concussion. Yeah, and then, you I know, mean, she doesn't want him to be in his fifties and sixties and have what happened to a lot of other former ball players. Yeah, where so they're man, just you know, not then, he, that's then he should be telling people that he plans on playing until he's in his late forties. <laughs> what is that? That's I mean, that's that not the, I mean, he, Listen, he's out here openly telling people he's playing into his late forties. I agree with you. But <laughs> now, do you think he's the goat? I mean, we got the goat edition there on Madden. Oh, in That's football, a, yeah, yeah. I got it. Yeah. I mean, I got to give it to yeah, him. I hate to say uh, it. I, 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 if he if he didn't win this Super Bowl, I you know I it would still be a toss yeah, up the for me. Comeback is crazy, but you can't I deny think. that. Man. I what? think yeah, the, the last two Super Bowls because remember the Seahawks had the number one defense and they were yeah. down ten to the Seahawks late and they came back and won mm -hmm. and then to come back this game. I mean, the, these are the two and that put him up there. That's we, it. We can't just, you know, take it away from him just because, you know, he lost to the Giants twice in the Super Bowl. You know, not a lot of teams can beat Tom Brady. As a matter of fact, no other teams can beat Tom Brady in the Super Bowl. Not the Eagles. Uh, you know, not the Cowgirls. Yeah, you know, yeah. not so. It's not a lot of teams that can do that. Like they had, I, you know, I, I like to go back to the picture that you sent me, Eric, and they were showing. Um, you oh, know, you, you put that one up this no, week? No, we didn't put oh, it up okay, this week because right. I know Cliff won't put it up this all week. Right. But they showed like you know when the last time what was, Madden looked like what Madden looked yeah, like. You got to show Stab Man out. That's a good one. You know, so for the for the Giants, you know, it was the recent Madden. You know, yeah, yeah. Uh, for the for the cowgirls, it was you know the, the it was one. like Sega Madden. Yeah, Sega Madden. The Redskins. It, it was, was like Nintendo, Nintendo Madden. Madden. And for the Eagles, it was like when uh, Madden was actually A playing play. yeah, football. He was actually, <laughs> was actually yeah. a lineman. You wasted so much time. Exactly. <laughs> Speaking of the Eagles, <laughs> uh, they do sign former Patriot LeGarrette Blunt. Um, Probably won't help them, but nah, that's much. a good signing for them. I think that's. A but good it one. won't help them win the Super Bowl. I mean, they're not ready to win the Super Bowl. That's what I'm saying. I they're mean, they'll ready never be ready to win. The yeah, because they haven't won the one. Eagles. They haven't won one yet. I mean, how many teams haven't won the Super Bowl? Like they're in that club. Yeah. So I think it's the Eagles, the Browns. Um, who, who else is in that? Is in that? Chargers don't have a Super Bowl. Chargers. So you're Chief. in the bottom bottom yeah. three. She's, uh, you know, um, I mean, they they barely make the playoffs anymore. 
man, it's just horrible. You know, I didn't I didn't want to put that out there like that, but you know, they haven't won the Super Bowl yet, so I don't you know, I don't know. What are you gonna do? You know, like uh maybe Cliff knows the secret to when the Eagles will win a, a Super Bowl. I don't think it's gonna happen personally. Um I mean it just you know just garbage, garbage. You know the garbage color. You know that green the garbage. <laughs> you know it's just something about that. The, the Eagles. You got a lot to say on this topic. You know, <laughs> I'm just saying I don't. I don't want to put that. You know, out there. But I mean, I if I'm going to talk about it, I got to be honest. The, they haven't won anything. The numbers, the odds do say that the Giants are the favorite to take the East. Obviously, no big surprise there with you know the additional signing of Brandon Marshall mm -hmm. and you know their draft pick at tight end and and the know. Cowgirls secondary got worse. Yeah, and it wasn't like it was that good to begin with, but they definitely got worse. So I'm not surprised by that either. I was, you know, I was surprised. What did they have the Eagles at the bottom still? Or I mean, I'm not positive, but I would guess. So. I would have to assume. Yeah, I, would, I mean, the Redskins won nine games last year. Yeah, so, so you would have to assume out of those four, the Eagles would be listed as as the last place team. Exactly. Well, I mean, what are you gonna do? They used to being in last and losing, and you know, just not. You know, having they have guys like Thorpe in the Thompson, huddle. Sean Jeffrey, LeGarrette Blunt, and a really good defense. Are we gonna finish last? Well, first of all, Torrey Smith think, uh, played well, for the Ravens, and he's has yeah, not I think, been good. I mean, if you look, if you look like at the guys, year. if you, I mean, LeGarrette Blunt is a good signing. They, they look really good on paper, but I don't know. Hey, well, well, they look. You talking Eagles about players with the AARP card? There, you yeah, know. Alshon Jeffrey can't stay healthy. That's, That's why the Bears gave up on him. He exactly. can't stay healthy. Yeah, but the problem yeah, is he's like only healthy for about if. six games. Yeah. Out we'll the get season. you an Eagles romper though. Uh, it, yeah, <laughs> if the dog didn't walk in the middle of the road and stop, he wouldn't have got hit by the car. <laughs> you know, we can't just go by ifs. You know, I mean, the bottom line is I like like Eric Blunt because we got to we got to move on from this topic. But the bottom line is the Eagles haven't won. They're not going to win anytime Are you soon. Okay? I know. <laughs> uh, the the Seahawks say, uh, you know, Seahawks Bennett says Seattle is a perfect place for Colin Kaepernick. I mean, if you want him to play as a backup and sit on the bench the whole time, but I don't really see the reasoning for that. Well, at least he'll have a job. Well, this <laughs> is what we talked about before, though. Yeah. You know, Cap isn't going to start anywhere. So this whole drama. Well, the Browns. No. He's the, not starting for the Browns. The Jets. He's not starting for the Jets. He could, he could beat out. I mean, who's the Jets? I don't think the, they've signed They don't even have, yeah, they, they so don't they don't have anybody. They signed uh, McCown. Uh, uh, now, again, that's not to say he's not better than McCown. Yeah. But if you're the Jets, why would you invest in Cap? When you're not going anywhere anyway. That's true. You know, like, what's the point of yeah. throwing $12 million at a guy and then you're not going anywhere anyway? You could you could allocate those resource, resources somewhere yeah, else. Well, he's not worth $12 million anywhere. But that's, yeah. he, but he that's what he's going to want. realize that. Yeah. That's but, what he's going to want. Well, well, we do have the Derek Jeter video, and when we come back, we'll have the one and only Ladybug uh, on the program. And when so. we come back, the Eagles still won't have a Super Bowl? The, when? when we come back next year oh. and the year after that, you know, we'll, they will okay. still not have a what Super Bowl. What about, like, my 10-year anniversary? They will. St uh, the Knicks will get a, a ring before the Eagles do. Another ring oh, before the man. Eagles do. So, dang, that's cold blooded. I didn't even say that one, Cliff. <laughs> Moving along <laughs> to that Jerry Gear video. <laughs> respect, respect. What's going on, guys? Ladybug, one, two, three, two, three.
All right, we are back live, Real Fans, Real Talk, the one and only Ladybug in the building. What's going Hi, on, Ladybug? What's going on? You're going to have to shoot another one of those videos because Ladybug just came in and got OD jealous that I she know. wasn't in the video. Well, well, when Derek Jeter goes into the Hall of Fame. <laughs> no, it's <laughs> over. It's <laughs> over now. We're going to shoot another one. <laughs> no, it's over now. It's over now. Anyway, what's going on, guys? It's your favorite Ladybug here with your rumor mail, as always. I know I look a little bit different, but it's me. I'm here. First of all, I'm, excuse me, I'm, I'm sorry, lady, but I had to cut you off. You know how, like, Wendy Williams got the shoe cam? We need to have a shoe cam right now <laughs> on Ladybug. She come in here, she got heels on. I don't know where she's going right now. I think right this now. is the first time. Like, that you ever worn oh, heels. Real fans, real Get this, talk. Yeah, see, you. this is why that. we got Die. the best people. No, we got the best. <laughs> look at the shoe cam. Look at the shoe. Pop, pop, pop your toes. Pop your toes. Look at that. 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 See? There we go. Recognize this what y'all dealing with. See? <laughs> I wore heels on Real Fans Real Talk. Because you see, it's a sports show. What I need to wear heels? But I guess this is like, you know, the basketball you know, wives like the, when they wear yeah, the pro. Exactly. You go. So, you know, I have the hair and I have, you see, like I, I dressed it up today. Long anyway, hair don't care. All they're not Lonzo's because he doesn't sell. Yeah, no, he doesn't, yeah, yeah, he doesn't sell. <laughs> I'm not balling. So I guess I don't get, I don't get that. Anyway. So I want to uh, touch on it because, yes, I was jealous about the video. I'm sorry. But, um, you know, I'm not the only one that, that missed it. You know, A-Rod missed it, too. You know, A-Rod wasn't in attendance. Yeah, but he got an excuse. And, yeah. and, and, you know, for those who don't know the excuse, mind you, it was on Mother's Day. So that was a little, that was a little bit of, of, of a beef right there. Because obviously it's Mother's Day. Derek Jeter could have picked any other he, day. He wasn't with his mother. And not, Jeter didn't pick the day. The Yankees picked the yeah, day. Yankees picked the Yankees. day. Yankees. But... I need to write y'all a letter. Well, didn't that Jeter just say he anyway. wanted it to be on Mother's Day because his mother, uh, you know, was the reason yeah, why he was so the influence was in that he was? Yeah. I get it. Okay, but you know. But so going to the reason why A. Rod wasn't there so we could disprove this myth. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. About to well, say you that. know, it was Mother's Day, so he was in Miami that morning with his mom, and he did make it to New York around six ish. They say on social media, the ceremony started at seven, but A. Rod was spotted and and at dinner with J. Lo and her mom. And that's the end of the discussion. <laughs> I mean, you listen, out with J -Lo, that's yeah. have you seen, and her have, mother though. And have her you mother, seen like, Have you seen J Lo? Can y'all pull a picture of J Lo listen. up and show how she, she's still listen. looking good? I probably would have missed it too if I was A Rod f for J Lo. So I'm sorry. you know, and you know, they've had a bit of a strained relationship over the years. So you know, it was a big question if he was going to show up or not. But I guess it was a valid enough reason. To miss oh, it, so. Put, please get the picture of J Lo. Somebody <laughs> should have. Like, she's. I don't she's even know why we're sure Everyone knows that she's J Lo. Everybody knows. It's not like we need to remind people. And they know. But J Lo, you know, J Lo is a mom. Yeah, exactly. So she did take I don't care mind of her. Mind her, mind her but. <laughs> shout out to J Lo and A Rod. What we call them? What we call them? What was J Rod. J Rod. Yeah, shout out to J Rod. J Rod. Right. So definitely, um, that was a reason for the Or A Lo. A Lo. Anyway. But, you know, definitely shout outs to them. Um, you know, they're, they're doing what they got to do. They're taking it slow, I guess, because they both, you know, have their path. That's they're so both sweet, in the taking it slow. So that's, you know, it's awesome. Um, you know, I'm not balling like LeVar Ball and with all this ruckus that's going on. We have somebody else with their two cents, Mr. Dennis Rodman. Now, Dennis Rodman, come on, like, you say that name. I think rainbows just pop in your head. I th if, it, if it's just me, it's just me. But you say dead and fine, but you don't think of the rainbow. I guess you're different. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, he was spotted recently out discussing. Uh, you know, they were asking him about how he felt about Levar Ball. You know, just the whole situation. And he's like, listen, you know, it, let the kids play. You're making it too hype. You're getting, you know, you're making it so personal. Let the kid do what he got to do. Let him prove himself. You already proved yourself. Let your legacy live on. Like, you know, you suck. Basically, <laughs> quote, unquote, he said you suck. Like, well, just let the kids, let the kid play. I will say this, you know, Dennis Rodman, as uh, Rainbow, as you may have put it right there, <laughs> he is, he, he was an enforcer when he was That's in the right. league. And he probably doesn't like, you know, LeVar Ball talking about he could beat MJ in the game one-on-one -on -one, since he's probably still in that now. Nah, let me protect my guard, MJ, yeah. and whatnot. Let me let him know now. Nah, we don't play that over here. So I think that's probably part of it right there because they do, you know, they, they, they are yeah. still, you know, 
pretty cool in that respect. That loyalty, so that loyalty yeah. card it runs true. And um, you probably yeah. can't even beat Rodman in a one on one, and Rodman wasn't <laughs> right. even a scorer. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's, yeah. and that, LeVar, that's another LeVar boy thing. Definitely can. <laughs> yeah. Well, because I mean, you know, Robin don't play fair anyway, so yeah. I don't even know who would have been a whole that would have been the one on one. So. him. Yeah. Well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done with you guys. Anyway, so up in the air, you know, uh, Carmelo Anthony and Lala with this whole allegation, everything's been hush hush with them. But recently on Mother's Day, they have uh, they were seen together with their son out to eat for the day, celebrating Mother's Day. And um, even though the speculation seem that they are still going to be separating, they're trying to co-parent and still keep it uh, wholesome for their child. And also it's for the fact that, you know, that their son's been raised in the limelight, mm -hmm. you know, through his career, through her career. They made him a staple in their brand, in mm -hmm. their marriage. And now that they're going in such a, a dramatic route right now in their relationship, I know their son is being the first one affected because he's always in the limelight. He's a model, you know, he's in uh, the children's Sean John. All his sponsorship and endorsements are kind of, you know, out in the public also. So they're just trying to keep him uh, of sound mind and just keep him just, I guess, for the family and not so much in the media because the media can and they are trying to tear this apart. So, uh, it's you juicy know, gossip. That's what the media does. It is, but mm -hmm. it's always the 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 children yeah, he's, that he's ends so up young. being the yeah, casualty. He's young too, man. And he, like I said, he was raised in the limelight. He was born. Well, you know, him being yeah. born was an event. You know, mm -hmm. he. He was always at these games, always supporting his father next to his mother. And now with this, you know, separation and this alleged child, you know, you could tell that, you know, him being 10 years old, he is aware. He can see social media. He's not a young child. He's mm -hmm. not a, a baby. You know, he's going into that preteen age. So, you know, we just try and keep it for the kids. Hopefully they just keep that uh, grounded for him. So. Work that out, Mello. Yeah, definitely. Please, please, for the sake. Shout please. out to uh, shout out to all of them, man. I really do hope they get it together. His, his uh, son actually goes to uh, school with my goddaughter, so I really do hope that they, you know, get things together. I mean, listen. I mean, they, for the most part, I mean, they, I like them together. I like Lala and Mello together. I hope they can really just work it out. You know, we need more. We need more families. Definitely. All this divorce and, and you know, we know we need families and out this here. Public eye and this celebrity. Yeah. So Hollywood try to work world. it out. Hopefully, I don't know if the baby is his or not, but hopefully they can work that whole situation out. <laughs> and, uh, anyway, right. talking about babies, congratulations. Russell Westbrook and his wife, they gave birth to a baby boy this past week. You know, that um, I talked about the photo of him kissing the belly a few mm -hmm. weeks ago and it went public. Congratulations. You know, it's always amazing to see new life. Congrats. The baby already got his first triple double. <laughs> Fresh out the womb. Fresh out the womb. And, you know, before I close out, I definitely love to leave off with something so everybody can keep up with. The Rock. Yes, ladies and gentlemen. The Rock will not will, but possibly will be running for presidency in 2020. Now, if that's true and The Rock does it, I want to hear The Rock say, finally, <laughs> the, <laughs> the Rock has become your president. That's all I want to hear from The Rock. Has come back to the White House. <laughs> but it started, actually started as a joke. It started as a joke on social media because he does these spoofs. You know, he's known for acting on Saturday Night Live. He's done these spoofs as like a Hulk version of Barack Obama. It was called The <laughs> yeah, Rock Obama, that. actually, on Saturday Night Live. So uh, it was actually a, a funny skit on social media that actually turned into something that's possibly going to be happening in the next couple of years wow. yeah. and he's he's actually got a lot of support from other actors other people in hollywood other politicians actually his good friend mike foley from the wwf now wwe actually came mick up foley. and said mick foley. Mick. Yeah. sorry oh <laughs> thanks See, that's how you thanks. can tell the eagles <laughs> haven't won the super bowl the way he just said that you have somebody that got hate in their blood See, he came, I didn't even he do came, that. You he see? came for you. No, it's Mick. Like they went to high school together. And he had to get that that cleared up. 
It's all right. We have your Eagles romper in the mail. It's all right. Anyway. And, and Mick Foley got more rings than the Eagles, too, just so you know. <laughs> wow. So I heard the O. I heard the O in the control. Wow. That's so how would you guys feel seeing man. this? We already oh. see Trump. And that's going Listen, that way. That's what we're not going to talk about that. We don't have enough time. But how do you feel about I mean, we have, we have Ronald Reagan, who, who was an actor. <laughs> yeah. So why not? I'll go, I'll go with it. I'll go with The would Rock. Would you vote? Man. I would vote for, for The Rock. The Rock, the rock no. The if The Rock, rock actually was serious about it. Yeah, like actually, actually campaign put that work in, I would vote for The Rock. Now, they don't know if he's going to be, you know, Democratic I mean, or Republican. Sh- but Schwarzenegger, you know, is the governor of uh, of, of, ca- of California. <laughs> I am over You know what I'm right saying? I'm, I'm all for the rock. He need, he can rock bottom yeah, politics. Yeah, he has to say, if you smell in the end of the debate. Mick Foley <laughs> should be the vice president. Because <laughs> yeah, the then they could really, the rock and soccer nation could come out of retirement. Rock, well, well, oh, Mick Foley forgets where he is yeah. sometimes. They brought it back. That was really like a throwback Thursday right That definitely was That was. The rock and soccer nation. Connection. But you know, that's my rumor mill. Make sure you guys keep up with me. Yeah, it's over. 2020, Cliff. we made it. We got to get him out. We got to get the, the, the rock has come back right to Washington, D.C. That yeah. one will make sense. Exactly. Yep. He came back to D.C. You have to pick the D.C. one. See, come on. Cliff. Well, I'm not sure if we got enough time to find that one. But <laughs> if you guys can find him before we get up out of here. In the meantime, we've got a couple of minutes left. Final <laughs> thoughts. Uh, we'll start with you, Ladybug, since you have the floor as it is. Definitely. Make sure you guys stay tuned with the rumor mill every week and keep up with me on realfansrealtalk.com uh check me out on instagram legend in two games keep reading the blogs keep tuning in that's a fact and um i'm oh let me let me let me let the fans know i know y'all been waiting sunday biggie's birthday we're gonna release part one of the documentary raw deal the last big night so make sure y'all on the lookout for that and um King James, man. What can I say? LeBron James. <laughs> LeBron, LeBron James. James. <laughs> Statman, can you wait? Could you say it, Statman? Because if you say it, you, it would really make my day, Statman. Please. Could you just say it one time, Statman? Come on, man. Nope. Come on. Man. <laughs> <laughs> Not going to do it, bro. You see what Cliff is doing, right? You see what he's doing? Wow. You see what he's doing right now? He brought it back. I told back about again. this last week. You see, you know, you real. You real. He brought it back. You real disrespectful, Cliff. Cliff, right, you real fi- disrespectful for that. Final That's- thought once again. Rest in peace, the fallen homie, Rennell. You will definitely be missed. One of the uh, most fun people to be around. And uh, a lot of people will miss him. And rest in peace. And that does it for this edition of Real Fans Real Talk. For Ladybug, Eric Sanchez, Trip Young, I'm Mark the Statman Skevich. Thank you all for joining us. And we'll see you next week, everyone. Okay. Cliff, you lucky you so good at what you do, LeBron man. LeBron James. <laughs> real fans, real talk.com. Well, Arthur Domus, Trip Young, and Intern Tom. For the white and black fans, Asia to Manhattan. I get all my facts from my bro, Mark the Stats, man. If you're not tuned in, I recommend the CAT scan. Uh-huh, and if uh-huh. your brain checks out, then you deserve a backhand. Sports, <laughs> gossip, all the hot topics. Hey, hey. Real fans, real talk.com. Got it. They got the hottest bloggers. Did Jeremy Lynn hurt? We'll log onto the site and you can hear it from them first. I'm talking about the latest. I'm talking about the greatest. Go check out the archives. Even tell a neighbor. Tell them about from spring to winter, tuning in should be the only thing on your agenda. Certified cosign, you know what I'm about, son. Real fans, real talk.com. I'm out one. Real fans, real talk. Real fans, real talk. Real fans, real talk.com. Real fans, real talk.com. Real fans, real talk. Real fans, real talk. Real fans, real talk.com. Real fans, real talk.com. Bomb.